Um, so Courtney is a librarian at Durham Technical Community College in Durham, North Carolina. Um, she is not a graphic designer um, and she will also attest to that as well, but I'm really excited that she is offering this session on Canva because it's a resource that I feel all librarians can use um, if they're tasked with any sort of marketing in their role. So I'll hand it over to you, Courtney. Thank you, uh, Devin. Hello, everybody. I hope you're having a good day. If you're in North Carolina, I hope that you stay safe in the weather. Uh, I am Courtney Bibley and I work at Durham Tech. And I, like many people, um, was sort of thrust into the role of social media in our library in the past year. Previously, our library did not even have social media accounts, and it wasn't until the pandemic that um, marketing gave us <laughs> social media accounts. So we got an Instagram and a Facebook, and then we had to figure out what to do with it. So we turned to Canva, which I had already been using for posters, but has really um, shown its usefulness in the social media space. So what we're going to cover today is I'm going to show you some stuff that I've made with Canva, um, how to find and choose templates, tweak templates, use your own images, make a graphic from scratch. We'll do that together. And we'll also cover some whether a paid account is worth it for you. And then questions at the end. So this is an example of something that was small. I have about three inches and then I cut out the oval and I put it uh, next to books that took place or were about events in North Carolina in a book display. So this is just a reminder that Canva doesn't need to be only used for like elaborate things or doesn't need to only be used for social media things. It can really be used for whatever you want to use it for. I've made postcards in here um, I've done small things, I've done big things, whatever you want. This was a poster I made. This wiggly outline thing is a frame that I used. The photo came, it was a stock image in Canva. And I printed it out on many sheets of paper that I taped together as a poster. This was an Instagram post in October. The frames make it very easy to add covers, book covers from your collection um, and make them all nice and even. And it's incredibly easy to customize these kind of template, templates because they're pre-made. All you have to do is select the books, which is obviously something we can do very well. You can think out that outside the box so this is, for example, a graphic I made with wedding pictures from my stepsister's wedding. And I had it printed on a jigsaw puzzle and gave it to them as a wedding present. So I used the grid function and the frames to make it an interesting and hopefully difficult puzzle. <laughs> Here's something I made. That was an invitation to a birthday party I threw in the before times. Um, one thing I to keep in mind is that I'm going to be using the free function, the free version of Canva for everything I do today, because most of you don't have, according to the survey, a paid Canva account. When you look, and you, as you'll see later, a lot of things in Canva are only available without watermarks if, you've are, if you pay for them. If you want to use something with watermark, I highly recommend it be something very small. So you can't even tell that these little nacho chips have Canva watermark on them. If it was any bigger, you would be able to tell. And I've seen people recommend that you not mind if the watermark is there. I do think it makes it look less professional. Um, we're gonna go over how to change and tweak the templates to make them your own. So this is something I did just a little bit ago for International Women's Day. And so the one on the left is the template that Canva made. 
and the one on the right is what I tweaked it into to post on our library Instagram. So I added books to my collection. I took away the plants so, to balance it out because I was adding the books and I added a rainbow of books in the background. Um, one thing I really like about Canva is that you can make your posters in your library and your social media graphics match if they're on the same theme. So right now our library is doing Women's History Month Rex on our social media accounts. And we also have a physical display in the library with this poster on the right. And I should mention that this is um, that we had a library and I this frame here is one that came with Canva and because it's a digital book, um, that's what it looks like a palette. Um, we are going to go over how to use layers when you're designing something or working with the templates. So for instance, if you're not used to thinking in layers in terms of images, um, a layer just means one image on top of another. So the background here is a layer. The words that you see, the right handwriting is a layer. And then the books are each their own layer on top of their writing. This is something that you can do with all kinds of photo editing. Canva gives you a decent amount of control. If you're used to working with Photoshop or GIMP or things like that, you will not have as much control as you do in those programs. That's because Canva is not made for graphic designers. Um, it's made for people like me and probably you who do not have a graphic design degree. Um, <clears throat> I've made a couple, oops, I've made a couple infographics. Um, the infographics are super helpful and you can customize them according to like add little images to them, um, background images, make them the colors that you want and really customize them to what you're doing. But having that template there is incredibly helpful when you're making an infographic. You can make GIFs um, and the GIFs that you can make are pretty simple ones, but they, they're cute. And you can also make videos. So this is an Instagram story that I made and posted it on our Instagram. I recorded the video on my phone, uploaded it to Canva, and put it in this iPhone frame here. And then I was able to download the Instagram story and post it to our library Instagram story. There is an app uh, for Canva and just briefly the good and the bad about it. The good things are that it's easy to upload pictures that you took on your phone to your Canva account and download Canva graphics to post on Instagram through the app or Facebook or whatever social media platform you're using. You can pretty easily change any text or maybe swap out a book cover using the app. What's not great about it is that for me at least, it can be difficult to make a whole new design on a small screen. It might be different if you're using something larger like a Kindle or an iPad. However, I use my phone and so it's a bit difficult to get the control and scroll through all the options on your phone, for me anyway. Um, more importantly, when I download from the app things that move, I've never gotten it to download nicely. So it often downloads and it randomly moves, it moves elements around. Um, so that functionality is not amazing. Static images are great. Videos and GIFs can be mm, problematic when using the app. So um, let's start using Canva. And 
so this whole presentation in Canva. Um, and so when I exit it, you can see the boxes and I could edit it in real time right now. But we are going to go back to my homepage. And so this is the free version of Canva. So everything that you see with the little crown next to it needs a paid feature. And you can, on your homepage, see your recent designs and scroll through them. And you've got templates to choose from. So say we want to use the brand kit because it's something that I have found incredibly useful. You can upgrade and get more functionality with the brand kit, like adding logos in your fonts. However, for just the colors template that comes in the free version, you get one color palette. And it's incredibly useful if your organization has designated colors like Durham Tech does. To put in the colors, you can get the hex codes from your marketing department and put in the colors here. And then you don't have to type in the hex codes every time. And you don't have to guess at the color. You can just use them and they'll, they'll be available. I'll show you when you're designing easily. So we'll go to the template section. And there are a ton of templates that you can think of, you can make. Um, so let's make a bookmark. There's even uh, TikTok templates. If you have ventured onto TikTok, I have not, uh, bless you if you have. When you're looking at templates, if you just hover over it, it'll tell you whether it's free or not. So this one's free, this one's paid. You always have the option of starting from a blank uh, template. The benefit to that is that it's pre-sized. So if you're trying to make a social media post or a postcard or a bookmark, and you're not exactly sure how big it needs to be, starting from a template that is just a blank one can be really helpful. You don't have to worry about sizing it Yeah. So let's say we want this one. Um, it shows you the front and the back of the bookmark. And so you'd say use the template. And it will load. So you have this template bookmark, but maybe you don't want to just use it as is. Maybe you want to jazz it up a little, do some, add some color or photos or something like that. Um, your options come over here on the left. So uh, you can start with elements. The elements are where you find most of the features. Obviously, if it's something like a bookmark that's going to be printed out, you don't want to use any of the stickers or images that move. However, what you can add is frames and shapes, charts. So for this one, it says here is you stopped. Um, if you wanted to, and I guess you wouldn't really want to for a bookmark, but it's a cool feature, so I'm going to show it to you. You could say, I'm 18% done with this book. And you can decide how big you, how thick you want that line. If you want it to actually say the percentage in the middle. And you can move it around on the image. You can change the font of the middle number along with the color. And this is where that brand uh, palette comes in because I do not have to search 
in the default colors and I do not have to put in the hex code or move the thing around and get a color. I can just, it just says, these are the drum check colors. So that's what I would use. That is one of the most helpful features in Canva for me. So we could say, I'm 19% done with this book if we wanted. But I don't really want to do that. So I'm going to delete this and I'll just go over here to the trash button and delete it. What maybe I really want to do is add some background photos. So I can go to the grids and say, hey, let's see where I would want the photos to be. There are a lot of options for big and small, but let's do this one. So what that does is it puts a grid here and you're like, well, Courtney, what does a grid do? That's a great question. In here in photos, you have basically a ton of photos to choose from. However, not all of them are free. So the ones at the top tend to be free and then the further down you scroll, you'll come into more paid content. You search for what you want. So if I want photos of books, I can search for that. And again, when you see the little pro crown symbol, that means it's not free. You need a pro account to use it. So we'll stick for the free ones. Now what the grid does is it makes it so that when you drag the photo, it puts it in the grid. And then once it's in the grid, you could move it around if you wanted to show a different section of the photo. So maybe I like it right there. And I'll move this one to the top. And it's so easy, you just click and drag. But now I can't really read the words because the background is too, it pops too much. So what I can also do is change the background. To do it to change how it looks, make epic or festive or whimsical. I like whimsical. I can make it more or less whimsical. More whimsical is pretty intense. Let's keep it mm, less. Medium whimsical is fine. I can also adjust things like the brightness, the contrast, saturation, tint, blur, X process, and vignette. Most of these things I don't use that much, but they can be fun to play with. And sometimes they come, like there are things, specific things that vignette looks really good with. You can up the contrast to see how it looks. And then you can up the brightness. So let's make it a little bit brighter. There. And we'll do the same thing with this one. So we'll make it whimsical. Oops, I don't want the effects. We will make it whimsical and then we will make it a little brighter. And then you can read the text a little better. You could also do more things to it, obviously. <laughs> um, and then don't forget, you would have to do a similar thing to the back to make it match. And so now that we have our bookmark, bookmark um, let's make something else because the options are endless. Uh, so say we want to make something that is going to be on Facebook. And we want to highlight some books in our collection. So let's say we use this spring free template. The template comes with a nice quote 
and the circle, the text in this specific font, and the background. You can keep all of it, or you can keep none of it. In this case, what I want to do is add books. So I'm going to get rid of the circle and the text and just keep the background. So when you go to elements, similar to grids, frames work a lot, a lot similar to grids. <laughs> um, so you have all these different shapes. These squares, circles, all the triangles, circles. We'll keep it relatively full and just do this one. And you can up the covers and just drop it. It doesn't have to be book cover. You can make sure you want. Hey, Courtney, I think your audio is a little bit um, copy. So I think if you turn off your video and see if that helps. Sure. My video is not on. Here, I think I just stopped your video to see if that helped. Okay, I hope it does. So we will just um, click and drag because uh, maybe loading all the images is slowing it down. So we'll just click and drag any image into the frames. And as you can see, it is as simple as clicking and dragging. It's not difficult at all. Once they're in there, you can apply that filter um, you can make it epic or festive or peony and make it bigger or smaller. And so when you're doing a lot of these things, if you want it to be centered or, and especially if you have more than one element lined up nicely. So when you drag your thing around, you can see these lines appear. And so that means it's centered in the middle. And then when you drag it on the horizontal line, you can see it centered in the middle because it has both lines across. If you make it smaller, you just drag it so you see both of those lines again so that you can have both, you have it perfectly centered in the middle. There are certainly times when you might not want it to be centered in the middle. So maybe you move it up here and you add an image and you make it smaller and you're like, I really want this to be lined up. So maybe it's not centered in the middle, but it's still centered on the horizontal axis. Or if you want to line it up, there's a line that will line the edges to tell you when you've lined up the two elements. It can be a little difficult to see, so I'll do it again. So if you see the dotted line here on the right side of the two elements, that means they're lined up on that edge. And if I want to replace an image, I can just do that. It's important to note that if you use a paid image from the left side and then put a free image on top of it, 
you still are using a paid image and it will prompt you to pay for it or ask you if you're okay with a watermark when you try and download it. So it's still there even if you can't see it if, you've, if it's under another layer. Speaking of layers, if you have something and you on top of something else and you want it to be under it, select the thing that you want to change, hit position and you can move it backwards and forwards. So now I put it behind that other element. So, and I can move it back to the front. You can also make things more or less transparent. So if I want to be able to see through it, I can do that. Um, and that can be really helpful. And if I really like the size uh, and shape and this element, I can also duplicate it as many times as I want. That's really helpful if you have if you're creating a design and you have the size that you want and you want it all to be perfectly lined up. Like that. All right, so well, I got up this one and we're gonna make one all together. So. I'm going to do an Instagram post because that is my personal social media of choice currently. And we will start from a blank. A blank, blank sheet. Uh, so I think I want to highlight one of my favorite recent reads, which is this book, All We Can Save. It's in our library collection. So I've uploaded the image and I have it in here, but what do I want to do with it? Well, I can go to elements. And as we have previously seen with frames, I can put that book cover in a frame to give it a nice, easy, rounded border. And I can also add images and little graphics. So if I search for Earth, because this is a climate related book, you're going to get a ton of cute graphics. All the ones, again, with a little crown are not free, but the ones that say free are free. So I'm going to use this cute little earth. And maybe I want a book element in there. So there's a ton of different ways and kinds of images that it gives you. Uh, I'm going to pick this one and now I can resize it and put it in the little earth's hands. Look at that. Very cute. He's so happy to be reading this book. So Next, I want to add a background. So here's the more interactive part. If I want a flower background, should I do roses? Should I do just the one flower? Or should I do purple puffballs? So put in the chat, Roses, purple puffballs, or one pink flower. And then when enough people have voted, 
Devin can let me know the winner. I'm seeing most votes for the pink flower. Okay. So we have a pink flower. Excellent. Then we can add some text. Now you can add just regular plain text and choose your font, or you can use a font and sort of layout that they have already made. So text templates. Uh, in this case, I'm going to use this one. And I'll change the text, but it will still be in the style that they made. And I can resize it and I can change the color of the text. And you can use any color or the colors of your institution. or you can pick a totally new color. And I'm gonna move it to the top. Actually change it to this. And now I'm going to move this down here. And we can add one more element. Sometimes it can be really nice to just have a gradient in the background. So that's what we will do. Make it bigger and cover everything and then put it in the back. And it does cover our flower, but we can fix that with the transparency. So you can still see the flower, but you still get the shape as well. So I wouldn't call this a perfect graphic, but it uses a lot of the things that we talked about today. And you get a good overview of how you can start putting these things together. So. <clears throat> We'll go back to the presentation. And we'll talk about whether the pro account is worth it. So the pro account is $12.99 per month or $119.99 per year. It does let you schedule posts, which can be really, really helpful, um, both for in planning and for just stress. Uh, it does not schedule posts to Instagram right now. I think that they're working on adding that feature, but if your library heavily uses Instagram, that can be a deal breaker. You also have to link those social media accounts to Canva in order to do that, which makes sense, uh, but you have to be comfortable doing that. The brand kit can be incredibly helpful with the pro account to have more than one color pal palette stored. Um, for instance, our library has both the Durham Tech color palette and the Dogwood Digital Library. 
which is our overdrive consortium um, color stored and the logo. Resizing an image for different platforms with really minimal editing can be helpful. So you can make one image and easily make it a Facebook post, an Instagram post, a WordPress blog header, and it can all be the same image, just resized. You do have to do a little bit of restructuring when it resizes it, but it's, it's very minimal and it can make things pretty easy if you're trying to keep them the same across platforms. And the image and element library is extremely helpful. You don't have to track down public domain images or creative thing. commons images. You He's can done. Done. just use what they have without having to worry about crediting. This guy should not be in the thing anymore. Who's hitting this thing? Like Are there fire. any questions? No, there's nobody. So um, one of the questions that came up. Nobody to the bottom bar now. Oh, I think. Do chats or something. I think someone's not muted. Um, folks, just make sure that you're muted. How do I do it? How do I get it back? We have a question from uh, Colette asking. How do I get it back if I wanted it? How would you print several bookmarks you after you there paid. and then get the bigger thing again? Click on what? The talk thing. What's the talk thing? This. Now I think it's that. The corner. Hey, um, I think somebody is not muted. Please make sure that you're muted. So for if you're printing out bookmarks, um, it depends a little bit on your institution and how many you're printing out. If you have an in-house printing uh, service, then you can send it to them and they can print it for you potentially. What we tend to do is put the image in publisher and print it from there and just print it on our own copy machines on uh, slightly thicker paper, paper than regular paper. So you do have to print it yourself. Canva can't do that for you. Yeah. We have, um, from the survey, we had a couple of questions about how to work with the volume of templates that you have, the options for customizing certain things, um, all the different icons and elements and still make content look good. What um, sort of suggestions do you have for that, Courtney? Yeah, um, so one thing that I find, I, again, with the brand kit, if you change the colors on a template it can, to your institution colors, it can really sort of customize it really easily um, without spending a lot of time. So if you see this presentation here, started as this presentation over on the left. Um, I added the, I changed the colors and I added the P's. Um, and so that made it a little more unique, a little more me and required relatively little effort on my part. Um, there are a lot of templates, it's true. As you get experience and start really um, using Canva, you'll learn the kinds of templates that you like best or that work best for your content. And it really, it can be overwhelming at first, but it's, it's actually not too difficult. One of the great things is that there's not a lot of wrong um, choices. What Canva does not give you as much freedom to make changes as say Photoshop or GIMP or other um, graphic design software. And the reason that is, is because it's made for people like me and people like you who are not graphic designers. And so you can think of those um, restrictions as like protection against bad design choices. <laughs> so if you just stick with the templates, 
um, you're, you're generally pretty safe in terms of making a good graphic. Yeah, so you're kind of saying like um, the templates have created some sort of or following certain principles of color and right layout. The layout and stuff like that. Yes. We have another question from Janelle asking Canva has autosave. Is there a way to go back to previous versions? No, not that I know of. Um, you can, I mean, if you're in it, you can hit undo always. Uh, and you can always make a copy of something. And like, if you're worried about that, you can make a copy and then make more editing changes on the copy and keep the original. If you resize something, it makes a copy. Um, I can't show you that because this is as a pro account feature. Um, but if you were to say, make a copy of this slide for a Facebook post, it would show up as two different items in your gallery. We also had a question about how to resize things. So we've had a couple of survey responses that ask how to resize things for social media, um, how to resize print versus digital. Um, what do you recommend in terms of resizing in Canva? So if you have a pro account, it's really easy. Obviously, um, you just hit that resize button and it will do it for you. If you do not have a pro account, my advice would be to just find a template uh, in the search templates for the thing that you want to resize it as. So Facebook, say, um, and then make a blank one and then copy, you can copy images. Uh, add as a new page and put the image here. Oops, that's not right. <laughs> um, but you can copy an element and put it in the new thing and just, just delete everything that's there to make it blank. Um, or you can start with a blank template. So because you can copy all of the images really easily, um, you can resize things yourself. It just takes a little bit more effort. There was also a question about importing photos. Mm -hmm. um, if you go to uploads, you can upload media from your computer or from the cloud. And you can also do that with videos um, and audio. And then it would show up here in your uploaded media to be used at your leisure. It's pretty easy. We also had a question on the survey about using Canva with students. Have you done that before? Or do you have any recommendations for that? I do not have, like I don't teach a class, so I can't speak to using it directly with students. Uh, I, there is a Canva for education, but our institution doesn't qualify for that. So I don't have any experience with that. Um, okay, so we have another question here about um, how to make kind of organic marketing materials without relying too much on a template. Yeah, so then you would just start with a blank, um, a blank whatever size you want. I think you can create custom sizes, but if you want to make a poster, um, you can just make a blank poster and use the elements or upload your own photos, make whatever you want. Um, the adding your hex codes for your color can always make it look uh, a little more organic to your institution. 
and that's in that brand kit. Are there any sort of um, shortcuts that people can use in the platform or things that you find that are shortcuts? Uh, shortcuts, the shortcuts, they have a uh, pretty much made pro account things. So like resizing mm -hmm. and adding your logo, um, stuff like that. Though I will say that the adding your logo thing in the brand kit is helpful, but you can just upload it over here as well. Um, so you can have, in fact, I think if I scroll down, yeah, I have our Durham Tech Library logo here. Um, so you can, there's no reason you can't just upload it as an image as well. Yeah, that's a so good point. That can be a shortcut in the sense that you don't have to pay for a pro account to put your logo in Canva. Yeah. If that's what um, for you. Camille's asking to upload to a social media platform. Do you just hit share when you're finished with your design? So if you have linked your social media accounts to Canva, then yes, you can do that. However, um, we have not done that. So I have been uploading it from my Instagram app or Facebook on my computer. Um, it's probably easier to do it if you link your accounts. However, my our social media accounts are also linked with our personal accounts and I haven't really wanted to link that to Canva. That's just my own hang up. Christina is asking, how exactly do you link your accounts? That is a pro account feature. Um, and so I can't show it to you on the, the free version, um, but basically you just give them your login information. Folks, um, feel free to submit questions as they come up. I'm just kind of working through some of the survey responses that we got in the last week or so. Um, so one of the questions that came up was also, um, let's see, I'm just trying to pull this up. Um, folks felt like they didn't know or they weren't able to devote a lot of time to learning Canva. It felt kind of cumbersome. Um, feels like another thing to add to your plate. And I think what Courtney, you've shown is if you make things for personal use, that's kind of a good way to actually to learn a new resource pretty quickly. Would you agree with that? Yes, I'm, I'm a big proponent of the best way to learn something is to just use it, um, mess around in it. Don't be afraid to make something ugly. And I will say that I totally understand not wanting to learn another thing when it comes to um, digital stuff and social media. I mean, when TikTok came out, I was like, oh my gosh, are you kidding? Um, and then Instagram added reels and everybody was doing that. And to, <laughs> Canva does have uh, Instagram reel templates, which I will be experimenting with as soon as I um, decide that I want to devote time to it. But Canva is really here because there are these templates to make it as easy as possible. So you can use, for instance, if I used this International Women's Day post, there's absolutely nothing wrong with this. I changed it to make it a little more customized to our library, but there was nothing wrong with the original post. So if you're worried about not making something look good or not having the time there's nothing wrong with just using what they have and then as you get more comfortable with it you can start to tweak things a little more but they have good graphics pre-made for you to make it really pretty as easy as possible paula's asking can you search templates by color or style yes so if you go to templates, um, I could do like ground random and I would get 
some Instagram templates that are red. Um, so yes, you can do that. And you can even search. Um, so if you had text that you wanted to put in and you're not sure what font you want, let me move it so you can see it better. Um, you, you can search the fonts. So if you wanted handwriting or typing, and you'll get a bunch of fonts that look kind of like typewriter type. We also had a question about whether anybody has tried embedding elements that they've made in Canva into LibGuides. Have you done that before? I have created images and put them in LibGuides with no problem. Yeah. Um, they, I mean, anything made in Canva, especially if it's a static image, is, is just an image that you would get from anywhere. So you can download it as a JPEG, as a PNG. Um, you can download it as, if you have a moving image, you can download it as a GIF or as a, a movie file. Instagram, for instance, won't post GIFs properly. So, you know, there's some platform specific weird things sometimes, but I haven't had any problem putting things in LibGuides that I've made. We have a question from the survey. Is it bad to use a commonly used template to create your marketing? No, I don't think so. Um, I think you've I, even shown with there for. Yeah, I think you've shown with the International Women's Day post that you can tweak it and adjust it to make it personalized. And really, I think people don't normally recognize if something's from Canva or it's not. Um, the only people who would notice that are people who are on Canva all the time. <laughs> yes. Um, and even if the people who are on Canva all the time recognize it, they're not going to judge you for it. They yeah. also use Canva. We have a couple of minutes left, folks. So if you have any additional questions about Canva, about using it for marketing purposes, please feel free to submit those. Our library is just a paid version of Canva and uh, we, purchased, we purchased it when the pandemic started uh, and it has been helpful. However, because you can, it just takes a little more work in terms of finding photos and taking your own photos and being willing to be a little creative um, if but you can make stuff just as nice with a free account jennifer's asking if you make an automated graphic then download it then manually upload it to your social media platform, will it retain its animation? That depends on what kind of file you download it as. So if you download it as a GIF, then yes. If you download it as a movie file, then yes. If you download it as a PNG or a JPEG, no. Ah, interesting. Brandy is offering a really helpful suggestion for our public library folks. So um, we applied for the free nonprofit account through our Friends of the Library group. Most public libraries don't qualify for the free nonprofit account, but Friends groups do, just in case anybody was looking to access the pro level without the added cost. That's a really good suggestion. Um, I hope you, some of you take her up on that. Yeah, that could be, that could be awesome. Yeah. Uh, our community, community colleges also do not qualify for that. 
All right. Well, it's looking like we've covered a lot of questions in the last 20 or so minutes, um, and we're not receiving many folks. Um, if you're heading out, just something to keep in mind, we have a bunch of webinars coming up this month from NC Live and also other consortia that we're partnered with. If you want to take a look at any of those sessions coming up, just go to nclive.org slash instruction slash calendar and feel free to register for those. I hope you all found this helpful and thank you so much, Courtney, for volunteering your time for this. Thank you for having me. And if anyone has any questions, um, feel free to reach out. All right, keep an eye out for a follow-up email later today. I'll send Courtney's slides and a recording and a survey um, to your inbox. But in the meantime, take care. For those of us in North Carolina, stay safe in this weather. See ya.